Well, breaking news coming in. The public protector Mkwebane clarifies her position on terms of reference for the capture inquiry. Mkwebane wants the Gupta leaks to be added to the state capture inquiry. Mkwebane says that her remarks in the January 10th statement about pre-1994 corruption cases has been misinterpreted. She says that all related allegations that came out after the report and have been referred to her must also be investigated. Political analyst Professor Sipo Siepe joins me now on the phone. And a very good evening to you, sir. Thank you so much for making time to join us here on ANN7. Now, is it an about turn on the matter of expansion of the inquiry beyond the public protector's report, or was the public protector really misunderstood by the mainstream media? Well, I think she was probably understood, but there's been a lot of pressure on her and uh, a lot of threats, and uh, she's buckling. Uh, in uh, from the from these external pressures, when she started, and the statement was quite clear that it was uh, she welcomed the notion of the broadening of uh, the state of capture. But what she is actually saying is uh, really focusing on the period because I can also understand that uh, you don't want to go to pre 1994 uh, for for. For, for now, mm. because you like to uh, use a shorter period to be able to engage and also to learn how to deal with far bigger uh, projects. But the, the notion of limiting it only to a, a small grouping and also to what had emerged from the interaction and from the, the previous public protector. What is problematic about it is that the previous public protector did indicate that the hair report was constrained by the budget, that if she had had the time and resources, she would have done an extensive investigation. So if somebody says that this report is limited by these constraints, then you would then understand or you should read from there to say, I'm also, if I had time, I would have expanded it. Mm. I would have come up with more. So when we have an opportunity to deal comprehensively with corruption, this is what we need to do. But what we see here is a retreat. Because uh, for some people, this uh, judicial commission of inquiry is supposed to serve a particular political expedient posture and position. And it is not really about rooting out corruption. It is really about targeting a few individuals and letting off many other such scandals. So what the, the position should be, we should actually say, let us limit it in terms of time, but let's broaden it within that time so that the, all the culprits and all people who could have been found, we should not be simply saying, let's focus on the trigger, but we must look at the entirety. And if you listen to... Uh, the statement that came from the APC, the African People's Convention, they actually made a case that corruption is corruption, and if you are really serious about it, let it not be selective, let it not be personal, let it not be expedient. And what we have here, you have a, a, a public protector who seems to be battling under the pressure of those who want an expedient and personal and a narrow investigation. Mm. Well, thank you, Professor Sipo Sebe. Please stay on the phone line uh, for us. Just moving along to some other stories now. President Jacob Zuma has uh, filed an appeal to the court ruling that he is too conflicted to appoint the head of the National Prosecuting Authority. The North Hauteng High Court ruled last month that Deputy President Sula Ramaphosa should make the appointment within 60 days. At the same time, the court ruled the appointment of prosecution's head, Sean Abrahams, was invalid. It said Zuma could not appoint a new prosecution boss because there is a conflict in that the NPA is deciding whether to bring back charges of fraud and corruption against him. We go back now to our political analyst, Professor Sipio Sepe, still on the phone line with us. Now, would you be able to share with us on what grounds has the president challenged the court's ruling? Well, there are a number of issues. First of all, we have a judge who has already taken a position that the president is presumed guilty until he proves his innocence. Because if you start from the position that a, a person even though there may be allegations against that person. If you assume, and as the Constitution requires, that you presume that somebody is innocent until 
the person is proven guilty in a court of law, then you cannot begin to make uh, the, those statements that he was making. Because what he's saying is that I'm now convinced that you are uh, so conflicted in the sense that you, I think you are already guilty. And if you are guilty, there is a, a danger that the, if you appoint, you might appoint a lady. This is the same logic that he had actually used with uh, the appointment of the, uh, the uh, Judicial Commission of Inquiry, where he suggested that the president uh, or that the Tudima Tontela, who made that recommendation, that the, the president might be conflicted. Effectively, what you are saying is that they are, the president could appoint a judge who is corrupt. And uh, therefore, by saying, going to the chief justice, they say the chief justice will choose a judge who is not considered to be corruptible. And if that be the case, it is the, uh, it is the responsibility of the judge Mlambo to out those judges that he considers to be corrupt. Because if he's not going to tell us who are those judges who are corruptible, then he himself is guilty of uh, 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 keeping silent. And that is a very pro problematic proposition. And I think the president might be also be going through that. And when it comes to the appointment, remember, you still have a head of state. And what he's actually creating, and, and this also is reflective of somebody who has become personally involved, no longer judicially involved with the person of President Zuma. And these issues are the issues that another court can come to a different uh, conclusion. And let us also make sure that we defend the right of anybody, including the president, to seek uh, advice from the courts, but also to challenge what the lower courts are saying. We have seen instances where lower courts' decisions and rulings were overruled by a higher court, and also the higher court, the Supreme Court of Appeal, its rulings have also been overturned by the, by the courts consumer court. But we've all seen that the consumer court themselves judges are not in agreement. So these issues are not as clear cut as some people want them to make. If they, you can have the judges of consumer court disagree and all an issue becomes an issue of numbers. What more about ordinary citizens? So we must defend anybody's right to seek a uh, uh, an appeal to a higher court for clarity and where they feel that they may be clouded. And I think in this case, you have a judge who seems to be personally involved in the person of Jacob Zuma, that they, that they begins to cloud and color their own reading of law. Mm. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the phone line. That was uh, Professor Sipo Siepe, political analyst, just saying that the president must also be given his right to question the outcomes of court judgments and also to seek advice on those rulings.